Today I'm going to be showing you my custom TX-130 Republic fighter tank. This is the Legends version, as you can see by the yellow markings and the antennas at the back. I do have a Battlefront 2 2017 version of this as well, which basically takes out the yellow and removes those antennas. This is my second or third variation of the TX-130, although this is the first time I've built a Republic version. In the past, I've done the Imperial kind of gray and dark gray version, so that I've gotten a lot of mileage out of, but I wanted to try and build the more colorful Republic version and I really, really like how it looks. I think the color just brings so much more vibrance and interest to the model. I do have a gray version of this as well, but I'm still working on the instructions for that, so that isn't currently available. This one I think is going to be my favorite though. So starting off, obviously this is minifigure scale. This is based off of my original platform, which was exactly minifigure scale. And one thing also that I'm very pleased about this version, which I'll show you guys later, is it can actually fit a pilot. In my first version, you could only fit about half a minifigure, so you could only really have him sticking up on top, which you can definitely still do in this version. You just flip open the top hatch and then kind of sit him in with his arms kind of resting on the sides, so that's definitely still available. However, because there's no main gun or turret on the top here, I definitely wanted to make sure that there was enough space in the inside for a minifigure to sit. So I'm very happy about that, but I think I just overall really improved the look and durability of the model. I'm just so happy with how this thing came out, and so I'll just kind of give you guys a closer up look at some of the details that I'm really proud of. So starting off with the mandibles on the sides, it's a pretty straightforward construction. As you can see, it's mainly wedges and plates along the bottom with different slopes and curved slopes forming the kind of shape on the top and some color in there too with the olive green and as I mentioned before, that little piece of bright light orange. And then for the kind of missile box towards the back, I was pretty happy with how I was able to use the grill bricks on the front and the back for the kind of intake. And then I threw on some of those grill tiles to kind of emulate some of the detailing that's on the top of those boxes. And then going around to the very back, this is something that I'm very, very proud of. This is one of those sections on the fighter tank that I've seen a bunch of people attack in very different ways. And one of the things that's kind of missing in most of those versions is the angled patterns. I've seen a lot of people just simplify it into just squares with the lines and the circle in the middle, which I think looks okay, but I really wanted to have those kind of angled lines just forming out the shape. So I sacrificed a decent amount of space in order to get that but I'm very happy with how it looks. I think it definitely was worth it. And like I mentioned before as well with those little antennas, I just love how they look. Super simple, but they add so much to the look of the build. For the main body, I decided to use wedge plates and then a layer of tiles on top of it for the front section. I know some people have used snot in the past and I kind of like how that looks, but I think it just is a little bit too thick. So I wanted to go for the wedges, and especially now that the sandwich tiles are available, it really helps to clean that up. And I was able to add in those kind of stripes in white with some tiles angled, and then I just threw in the classic Republic logos. And then for the actual cockpit section, I went for a full snot construction all the way around the sides. There's a couple different wedges to kind of form the shape of the front and to get the angled slits for the viewports, which I think turned out really, really nice. And then above that, there are some vents. I threw in just dark bluish gray to kind of separate it from the black of the main viewports. And then going over to the sides, it's basically built with some wedge plates and they're just slapped on. And then I tried to emulate the look of the blaster cannons as best as I could. I used some longer flex tubes for the actual cannons because they give you a little bit more length than just using regular bars. And then at the base, I tried to capture the kind of ribbed larger section of the cannon right before the actual main housing unit, which I think turned out pretty well. Now we can take a look at the interior. The top hatch just flips up like so, 
And then I built in some side hatches that also flip up to give you more room so that you can actually fit a minifigure because as you know, the arms are wider than two studs. I tried to build as nice of an interior as I could with some tan kind of for the seats. And then for the control area, I used some bright green because that was definitely present in the reference photos that I was looking at. And he just has plenty of room in there with some panels on either side. So if you take the figure, you just kind of move his arms upwards a little bit and then fold his legs. And then he just slides right in to the cockpit. And there is just enough room that you can close up the hatches on top and he fits in there perfectly. And this does work for phase two as well. So I'll grab this gunner here and do the same thing. Just fold up his arms and legs and then he just slides right in and you can close the hatches on top of him as well. So I'm really happy about that. You can use this for either phase one or phase two, which is definitely something that I'm really happy about. But that is pretty much everything about this vehicle. I'm very happy with how it turned out. I think all of the details that I was able to capture and the scale just really work well in mocks. I'm planning on using this in an upcoming mock, so definitely make sure to stay tuned to see that. But that's pretty much all that I had for this video. Definitely keep an eye out for the Imperial version of this tank that will be coming out pretty soon as well. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you all in the next video. Goodbye.